you know, you're doing a lot faster stuff before they were rolling, and then you went into the soulful bends. Is yes. that is that based on the, on how you feel right now? Are you expressing no, something? Completely random. Random. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just what they get. Well, I got a lot, and that was really beautiful. But I got much. a lot of uh, traditional, I think, Marty Friedman lickage. I grew up listening to you. Oh, thank you very um, much. So it's it's great to meet you and to talk to you and to catch up with you. You haven't been in the United States for a while, no, really, it's been have a while, you? Yeah. So yeah. why'd you leave? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, it's an us? easy answer. Um, there was a period of time where I found myself listening only to Japanese music. So I came to the point where I really want to be in this scene in Japan, and I just stopped and left. So I know that you formed your band, and uh, we both formed a lot of bands. And tell me about uh, your experience with forming bands. Well, I, I've been in the same band for, for you know most of my life right now, but I've had a, a lot of member changes. So. In forming the band, uh, you know, I, I think it's like anybody else. You have a group of friends and you want to play rock music. And we were a bunch of friends who wanted to play in a punk band. Mm -hmm. And to us, if there was 100 people there, it was a success. When I started the band, the bands that were really influential for me were, believe it or not, Megadeth was a huge one for me. Cool. And, uh, and you were a really big part of that because of your eclectic playing and the mm -hmm. Eastern influences you were bringing in. And your playing is what got me into like investigating more eclectic styles and things like that. So, uh, yeah, starting the band was just like, it, it started, we started to write music that sounded a little different than it was out there, and that's when things started to happen for us. And that's when it was like, okay, we need to take this more seriously. Uh, everyone in the band has to be willing to go full force. We're quitting our jobs, we're quitting school, we're doing it, we're doing this. And so forming the band was easy, but like really creating the band that would then go on to tour the world and push it uh, was a little more difficult. Yeah, you, you need a certain amount of commitment from people. And right. There's not a whole lot of people who are willing to give up their jobs. And exactly. There's always somebody with a wife or a girlfriend that's a problem. It's true. It takes a certain mentality to go yeah. out there and, and do it. And uh, it seems glamorous at first, but when you're out there playing clubs and stuff, I think that what they do is they find the world's dirtiest toilets and just put a club around it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What about you? How 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 do you find player? How do you find players? Because I've had a lot of member changes due to yeah. personal injury or you know life circumstances or whatever. So, what uh what do you do when you have to find a player to play with? I'm in the situation, especially now that uh, I'm I'm planning to tour the world with my solo music. Where uh -huh. I've I've toured Japan, of course, and I've toured Europe a few times with it. But I'm going to do a bigger tour this year in 2014 for that. So I'm actually rounding up the members that right now. They're just basically my favorite people that I love to play with. That's how it should and be. And yeah. I have, you know, I have lists of all these people that I love to play with and I know that can deal with my music. Yeah. Which is, is, it's not too long because my music is pretty, it's freaky. Yeah. And I have a lot of really requirements about it. You, you've got to look cool while you're playing music. But I've accumulated certain number of people that I, I have ready to go out with me. So yeah. it's just a matter of people's schedules Throughout the schedules years, at this you point. pick up these little people on the way sure. that are the good, good seeds and the good... Sure. You know, I've, and got the, I've got more bass players <laughs> than, than guitar players and yeah. drummers. Okay. There's people that I trust that I love to play And when with. you say you have to look good when you're playing the music, I mean, I assume you mean you have to f look like you feel it, you care. Yeah, I mean, there's, you're there's feeling so it, much you more. You care about it. You have you know, to you perform. perform and you have to perform. It's not just about playing yeah. the notes or being on time. You have to like be in the music. Right. Know, and not even if you are a backup musician, it's your show, man. Yeah. So once the, you're out there, it's once the whole you're band. Out there, it's the whole band. Yeah, so exactly. sometimes, you know, really, really good seasoned players kind of act like it's only a gig. Mm. And um, I like to feel like it's this is a band. This is a band. Whatever yeah. I'm doing. And sometimes I play in bands. And not only my own music in Japan, I play with other artists and stuff. Right. And it's our, it's everybody's yeah, show. Yeah, you make it so, your own. So that's a, a, an important thing to perform. And, and yeah, I, I mean, uh, I always say, like, if you can't enjoy it and feel it, and it how can the crowd, you know, if you Absolutely. Not? I want my band members to be, blow me away. Right. I want the, the attention to be taken off me. Yeah. You know, and I've you know, had a drummer who's like, people are saying, this guy's blowing you away. I mean, he's stealing the show. He's stealing the show. It's like, aren't you worried? It's like, no, that's what I told him to do. Yeah, because it pushes you and it makes you, especially, uh, you know, both of us, and, and you've been doing music longer than I have, but we've both been in it a long time. Yeah. And it takes other people's excitement and energy to sure. keep us excited. You Absolutely. know, I, I go out and I play songs that I wrote almost 20 years ago. Yep. 
And it's these younger guys in my band who are fans or whatever that make me remind me that this is pretty, this is fun, man. This is cool and this is a privilege. And this is a good point. This is a privilege to be up here doing this. Sure. So, I mean, oh I saw God. an interview with you and they're like, what, what's the best thing about Japan? And out of everything, you're just like, I love the taxi. That's like if I went to, what's the best thing about Russia? They have awesome benches. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what, what is so great I don't know, about the, taxi cabs the best in thing Japan? about Japan is taxis are car washed every single day. Drivers are not allowed to talk on the phone and okay. they speak the language of the country that you're in. They all have the navigational systems, mm -hmm. so you get where you need to so go. It's efficient. It's efficient, and it's just a very pleasant experience. Yeah. Jason Becker, is he, does he live in Japan? No, he lives in San Francisco. He's a huge inspiration, and, yes. and you know you played with him for yes. many years. So, yes. do you still keep in contact? Absolutely, and uh, as you know, he has a Lou Gehrig's disease, which is yeah. ALS. But his mind is exactly normal. Even though he can't use his hands, he uses his eyes that's what I, to control a computer to make music. That's the most interesting thing. Uh, you know, I, I heard about this many years ago. Mm -hmm. He had started doing that, and the music's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, uh, and uh, we've collaborated on a new song on my album. Uh, so amazing. we wrote a song together, and it's the most insane song that either of us could possibly do together. Wow, it's like, I gotta hear this. I can't explain how much of an honor it was to have him do that much work with me given how hard it is to make him I mean, he's an inspiration. It just goes to show you that it's like a God-given thing, music. It's it a really talent is. that, like, you can't stop it. It doesn't matter. If it was not guitar, it would have been piano. If it's not piano, it's his eyes. But, but like, you never hear the guy complain about a thing. He's the biggest inspiration in my life. I gotta say, my, when I first went to Japan, at the time, I noticed that the rooms were really small, and these hotel rooms, like, you know, and I'm a little guy, so I was like, this is my place. Yeah. But I still, it was very tight. But when I went to the bathroom, the toilet, not only did it wipe for me, clean me, it, I think it made me a sandwich. I'm pretty <laughs> sure the toilet made me a sandwich. It was unbelievable. I sat there for about 45 minutes before I realized I was turning, I was pruning. That was the best thing about Japan? Japan for me. Yeah. As a fan, I gotta ask it. Why wouldn't you do any Megadeth reunions? Why, I mean, even just that record, you know, the rest, you know, like, you know, they got the rest of the guys, Dave's in the band, you know, they're doing the record. It's is a there, fair, it's is a there, fair is question. Is there a reason other than just like been there, done that? Or? That's kind of the main reason. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think it was a wonderful piece of history. I mean, it's one it's of the most important records to me ever. And you were I a major, major that. part of that, part of me being here right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, I really have a lot of respect and love for that mm. piece of history, and when I hear that, it just warms my heart. <laughs> but it doesn't make me want to go back and play it. Yeah. Um, only because it's fantastic what it is, and I'm so deeply into what I'm doing now, and I just don't say... It, I, I never really wanted to look backwards, really. Yeah, and I respect that. Other than I with, do. like, a lot of pride, but not like I want to redo something. Yeah. I'm, I'm just way more, like... It feels natural to do what I'm doing now. It doesn't yeah. feel natural. Let's go back and learn a bunch I of mean, songs. I mean, it's a disappointment as a fan, but I respect it as a musician because I don't feel like you should do anything you're not comfortable with. You should just move forward, and that's not worth it. You know, yeah. it's certainly not worth it. I, so. I think I think what fans want to see is what the the performer exactly wants to do. Yeah. And like, if I felt like I wanted to do that someday, yeah, unfortunately, I, you're wrong about that. Yeah, wrong about that. I wish it was true. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? You I think, think the fans well, want to see the guy bullshitting. The, I think fans want to relive things that were important to them. They want to see, mm. you know, I, I think that's the reality. They want to hear the songs that they grew up on. The nostalgia is important. But the true, true fans also want to follow that musician through their journey mm. into the future as right. well. Right. And, and the ones that don't are not real fans. Mm. Well, I get yeah. it because like music is is basically your own personal experiences with that music. Yeah. It's like if you lost your virginity to one of my songs, that's the song you're gonna want me of to play. Of course. So that's really important. I understand that, um, but I just n not really like into looking back at this yeah. point. You know, I'm mean, into looking forward and, and pushing myself to new challenges. Yeah. And it just never crossed my mind to like look back X number of years and replay that. Right. So you, your last record, I think, was 2012 or something? Yes. And <clears throat> it was called Bad DNA, right? Well, that's my last original record, but I did a record called Tokyo Jukebox 2 right after that. Bad DNA, it's almost like, I mean, it sounds like traditional Marty Friedman guitar playing, tasteful, melodic, you know, um, eclectic, fast, mm. aggressive stuff. Um, 
but it was like kind of almost in a way it had like a ministry type of vibe. There's like you know some of the rhythms and stuff are industrial. I love the ministry, so very that could definitely happen. Yeah, like very industrial and things like that with this amazing guitar playing on top. So it was yeah, I mean uh, it's just uh, I like to experiment a lot, and in Japan I have the freedom to do that. Um, pretty much have carte blanche over there with what yeah. I want to record and what I want to put out and not necessarily worry about following any kind of commercial trends with my solo music. So that's right. very freeing. And, and do you do feel that. they're less judgmental of you? Like if you had tried all these different kind of things here, people would be like, oh, it's not like Megadeth or it's not like, you know. With my new record, Inferno, mm. it's coming out on prosthetic records here right. in America. And our discussion was we're going to do, this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do it my whole the whole Marty Friedman concept, but it's not going to be tailored to Japan. It's, it's going to be what I want to do yeah. to release worldwide at the same time. So we're all on the same page with that. So um, it's really my thing. So if I love it, I'm really happy with it. That's where it ends. Right. And if anyone else wants to join the party, that's cool. Do you feel that in general, though, that the Japanese fans are less judgmental about what you do? Not, not the record labels or the business allowing you to do what you want, but you, do you feel that like if you were to release more eclectic music or stuff right after Megadeth that wasn't you know, as, as thrashy or whatever. In America, uh, it would have been more difficult for you to transition than uh, maybe it I, was in Japan. I don't want to say less judgmental, but uh, I, will, I will say that my fan base in Japan is way more eclectic because ever since I've been there, which is 10 years, I've done so much things outside of the box of metal music, hmm. not only musically, but like in television. Yeah. So people know me from so many different things that they really don't know what my main thing is there. Yeah. So a lot of people know me from television, like, what's this guy music like? And then the first thing they might hear of me is, might be my most recent music. Yeah. So they don't know that I've released 12 solo albums before and, uh, and like right. 10 so years of Megadeth. Right, so it's not like they have this preconceived... I've always kind of like just done exactly what I wanted and, and let the chips fall where they may yeah. kind of guy. So, you know, of course, when I first moved there, I had no idea what to expect. Mm. But uh, once I got there and started developing yeah, a personality outside of what people know me for worldwide, then I started to really be able to be free with my music. When I first joined Megadeth, they told me I'd never play guitar again. The doctor says, you got to stop playing guitar so you're going to lose your arm. Yeah. I was just about to record my guitars on the record. Oh I said, God. I don't care, I'm recording.